Hi guys. This is another hot, sticky, steamy summer day here in the end times in paradise, somewhere in the green mountains of Vermont, where we're heading to. God damn it! Another tick off my dog. Where we're heading to. Uh, 96 degrees in the tick infested paradise of the green mountains of Vermont on this hot steamy Monday morning uh, July 2nd 2018 good God here's another one oh, Jesus I can tell uh, I've got some horrendous tick-borne disease in my future this summer anyway it is Monday morning, July 2nd, 2018, so I'm just going to do on this hot, sticky Monday morning what I do every day to the best of my ability. And we're going to open up the mainstream media to see uh, how this planet is heading directly into a fireball at uh, 67,000 miles an hour. Damn it, I left my bullshit detector button and my no shit Sherlock button down on the ground so uh, you'll just have to imagine which buttons I'm gonna be picking up take a wild guess let's start our journey through the mainstream media in San Francisco California oh god where we see San Francisco skies turn orange as wildfires return to Northern California. San Francisco took on a post-apocalyptic shade of orange after smoke from Northern California wildfires reached the city on Sunday. Just under a year since the deadliest firestorms in state history, intense wildfires have returned to the region, fanned by high winds and hot temperatures. Yeah, smoke and ash from fires burning in the Yolo and Lake counties filled the sky about 75 miles south in the San Francisco Bay Area yesterday, giving the city a foreboding orange filter. There you go shithole state of California to the shithole country of Zombie Island, England, firefighters tackle second wildfire in Northern England. Firefighters in Northern England launched a large-scale attack on a new moorland blaze on Sunday as emergency responders continued to battle another nearby wildfire that has been burning all week they have now, and they're pretty sure that was started by an arsonist. Um, crews from Manchester and the surrounding county of Lancashire tackling a rapidly developing aggressive fire that gained strength overnight after two big blazes merged north of Bolton. Blah, blah, blah. Let's get back to our own shithole country and go up to Portlandia. Portlandia. What is going on in that peaceful city? Riot in Portland as far-right marchers clash with anti-fascist as police use pepper spray and other non-lethal ammunition on rival protesters. A riot was declared in cell block number nine otherwise known as downtown Portland, Oregon on Saturday evening as the city exploded into its worst protest violence of the Trump era. More than 150 supporters of the far-right Patriot Prayer Group. The Patriot Prayer Group fought pitched street battles with scores of anti-fascist protesters. Good Lord. Uh, anyway, riots in Portland, Oregon over uh, far-right 
prayer for, uh, anyway, from uh, Portlandia to the shithole country of Iran. Anybody who does not understand what water wars look like. Iran calls for calm after water protests and clashes. Iran called for calm on Sunday after protests in a southern city over water shortages turned violent overnight with reports of police shooting at demonstrators who attacked banks and public buildings. This is the one of some cop from Iran. <clears throat> Our effort is to bring these protests to an end as soon as possible with restraint from police and the cooperation of authorities. But if the opposite happens, the judiciary and law enforcement forces will carry out their duties. Yes, a number of violent protests have broken out in Iran since the beginning of the year over water, a growing political concern due to a drought which residents of parched areas and analysts say has been exacerbated by mismanagement. Um, there you go. Okay, from the shithole country of Iran back to our own shithole country uh, trade war with China. All right, we do have some good news. It is about time. Stock markets tumble as China-U.S. trade tariffs loom. Stock markets fell Monday. Oops, I guess they don't want me to read that story. Uh, anyway, uh, stock markets and oil prices down this morning. I, I guess the computer did not want you to hear that. Okay, what is going on over there in the shithole country of Oman? I guess that's O-M-A-N. A city in Oman just posted the world's hottest low temperature ever recorded, 109 degrees. Over a period of 24 hours, the temperature in the coastal city of Kiryat, Oman, never dropped below 109 degrees, otherwise known as about 43 degrees Celsius uh, on Tuesday. Most likely, the single highest single highest minimum temperature ever observed on planet Earth. For a location to remain no lower than 109 degrees around the clock is mind-boggling. In many locations, a temperature of 109 even during the heat of the afternoon would be unprecedented. was the high would be very nice to know what the high was. Nowhere in the story does it say what the high was. Anyway, I think we get it. Let's go back to the uh, Shit, I guess my computer is just hungry as it just ate the story. Uh, UK heat wave potato chip shortage looms. Now, of course, you know, for my English readers, Americans call chips what you call crisps. And what you call guys call chips we call french fries, but my guess is crisps, chips, and, and, and fries and all the rest are fucked because what the article was talking about before uh, my computer ate the article uh, was about the, uh, the growing potato drought uh, over there in, in the UK 
as uh, just the weather going from this cold ass soggy uh, spring to this blistering hot dry summer just slamming the potato crop. So uh, I guess you're going to have to buy your potatoes somewhere else because uh, you ain't getting them from your own home garden. Let's come back over here to our own shithole country and see what is on the mind of Chris Hedges today in Truth Dig. America, the failed state, is what's on Chris's mind. Gee, you know, sometimes I feel like when I'm reading these these Chris Hedges Truth Dig articles that kind of what Chris does is he just somewhat repeats his same rants over and over again. I would really love to compare the opening to this Chris Hedges rant to the opening of about a hundred thousand other Chris Hedges rants. We're just going to read the first paragraph. Our corporate coup d'etat in slow motion, as the writer John Ralston Saul calls it, has opened a Pandora's box of evils that is transforming America into a failed state. The un, what uh, Ralston Saul calls the unholy trinity of corruption, impunity, and violence can no longer be checked. The ruling elites abjectly serve corporate power to exploit and impoverish the citizenry. Democratic institutions, including the courts, are merchant are mechanisms of corporate repression. Financial fraud and corporate crime are carried out with impunity. The decay is exacerbated by the state's indiscriminate use of violence abroad and at home where rogue law enforcement agencies harass and arrest citizens and the undocumented and often kill the unarmed. A depressed and enraged population trapped by chronic unemployment and underemployment is overdosing on, op on opioids and beset by rising suicide rates. It engages in acts of nihilistic violence, including mass shootings. Hate groups proliferate. The savagery, mayhem, and grotesque distortions familiar to those on the outer reaches of empire increasingly characterize American existence. And presiding over it all is the American version of Ubu Roy, playwright Alfred Jerry's gluttonous, idiotic, vulgar, narcissistic, and infantile king who turned politics into burlesque. Thank you very much, uh, Chris Hedges, for summing it up. Let's go over, I don't even know what the website is here. Uh, thank you, Brother Aaron, for sending me this. Global economy party over as warning signs flash red. Pour yourself a stiff one. The party is nearly over. That was the message issued by the International Monetary Fund last week. The global economic momentum enjoyed in recent times is set to fade. The deadline, probably the end of 2019. Uh, however, even that timeline has been called into question by the global lender of last resort. Risks termed by the fund as clouds on the horizon amid sunshine are now, quote, closer than we had anticipated, according to Deputy Director Mitsuhiro Furasawa. Yes. Uh, anyway, this, uh, 
I think we get it. The party is over as warning signs flash red. Next to that, thank you again, Brother Aaron, for this one from The Independent. I'm going to go over to Collapse Chronicles later on today and read this entire story over there on Collapse Chronicles. Just start it out here. Society will collapse by 2040 due to catastrophic food shortages, says study. The results show that based on plausible climate trends and a total failure to change course, the global food supply system would face catastrophic losses and an unprecedented epidemic of food riots. A scientific model has suggested that society will collapse in less than three decades due to catastrophic food shortages if policies do not change. The model developed by a team at Anglia Ruskin University's Global Sustainability Institute uh, yes, does not account for society re acting to escalating crises by changing global behavior and policies. Well, the reason the model does not account for society reacting to these crises is, is that there is no fucking way uh, that the uh, global society is going to react to these crises. And if you want to know why, I suggest 1984. Read the book 1984 for George Orwell to understand why uh, they're not bothering to account for that pipe dream. Anyway, as I say later on today, I'm going to come back and read this whole story uh, at Collapse Chronicles. Uh, what is going on in Salon Mag? A couple of good stories from Salon Magazine. Uh, but this is actually a reprint in Salon from an article in Scientific American. Herbicides are under evolutionary threat. Can modern agriculture find a new way to fight back? Hmm. For farmers, protecting fields from pests and plagues is a constant battle fought on multiple fronts. Uh, blah, 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 uh, then talking about weeds. Although academics and companies are looking for technical alternatives to, to chemical herbicides, such as sprays made from biological compounds, a recent review by researchers at North Carolina State University cautions that society may not be able to uh, science its way out of this thorny problem. There is a quote considerable chance, the authors write, quote, that the evolution of pest resistance will outpace human innovation. Close quote. Addressing the situation requires a collective effort between funding agencies, regulators, farmers, and others, the authors add in the review published in Science. Uh, there you go. Uh, you know, all of these people uh, are people I need to be interviewing. Uh, for Collapse Chronicles. Uh, so many rants, so little time. I love this story. Uh, the mainstream media, just in case you're not aware of this, plastic, plastic is a big part of human life and a major source of pollution. Wow! I never thought of this. This is from NBC Nightly News, finally uh, breaking the story that so many of the items we use are made of plastic. 
but much of it does not get recycled and pollutes the land and seas. Hmm. Many cities are moving to ban certain products and some families are trying to live plastic free. Go. Let's go back to Salon Magazine uh, with their story. Oh, this is good old Eric Holthaus uh, now breaking into Salon Magazine. This this was Eric's uh, rant recently published on Grist. If climate change was an urgent problem in 1988, it is now an emergency. Thirty years ago, last week, NASA scientist James Hansen testified to Congress that the age of climate change had arrived. Hmm. Yes. Uh, so anyway, what Eric is doing here uh, is reviewing how uh, James Hansen's warnings 30 years ago and uh, what the planet has done with uh, his warning. 30 years after Hansen testified, the world still is not even close to solving the problem. In fact, for every year we wait, we are making the problem much, much harder. On our current path, emissions will still be rising 30 years from now, and the world will have long ago left behind all reasonable chance of preventing the irreversible tipping points in the climate system that Hansen predicted. If climate change was an urgent problem in 1988, it is now an emergency. There you go. Let's look at two more. There we go. The good old BBC. Some positive news about magic mushrooms. The BBC health uh, columnist Alex Thurman asking the question, could psychedelics transform mental health? Uh, psychedelic drugs are more likely to be associated with those damn hippies and the counterculture of the 1960s than people in white lab coats and clinical trials, but that might soon change as increasingly scientists are looking at whether these mind-altering drugs, which also include mescaline and DMT among others, might also have the potential to be mind healing. A number of studies have found psychedelics to show promise in treating mental health disorders like depression, addiction, and post-traumatic stress the disorder where other treatments have failed. So, I don't know, and just in my own case, have psychedelics transformed my mental health? I've just changed my form of depression and post-traumatic stress disorder from one form to another. But I will say that uh, psychedelics certainly are a, a, the prime way of pulling your head out of your clueless fucking moron ass. Uh, certainly. And it is because of psychedelics that I am sitting on this tractor uh, in Vermont uh, being a doomsday prophet instead of living in a beautiful home in South Austin, Texas with my air conditioner blowing on me. Anyway, but we're going to wind up again, oh, from the good old Washington Post with their... Uh, an opinion piece by Mitch Daniels. We don't know how foolish we look until a long time from now. Yes. Um, 
talking about the fallacy of presentism. Yes, presentism through which the values, mores, and conventions of the present day are used to judge almost always harshly and sanctimoniously our predecessors. And to what he's talking about here is looking uh, ahead uh, to the future where our descendants, assuming they are, are going to look back at today and obviously uh, say we're a bunch of clueless fucking morons and end winding up this article and this rant. <clears throat> Those who indulge in the arrogance of presentism can be assured that a century from now we will be looked on by our descendants or whatever genetically enhanced or computerized species has displaced us as hopelessly ignorant and morally backward in ways we cannot foresee today. I'll speak for yourself. More time spent trying to understand and empathize with those who struggled with harder problems than ours might enable us to learn from their accomplishments as well as their mistakes and look a little less absurd to our successors when their present comes. And I, I, assuming that should be if their present comes. Anyway, I think this is as good a place as any to wind up today's mainstream media doomsday headlines because uh, I gotta wrap this up and uh, sounds like I'm meeting up with the uh, editor of the old Village Voice, the former editor of Village Voice, to go swimming on this hot summer day and we will see if he is agreeable to an interview. Smoke them if you got them. Get in your tractor and ride. This is your old depressed collapsitarian. Bye, guys. Good lord. Too old for this.